Hi, and welcome to Smelling Coffee TV, a ministry of First Baptist Church in Cleveland, Mississippi. I'm Jennifer Walker, and I'm here with my good friend, Melanie Red, who has joined us for an episode before this one. And if you missed it, you can catch us on YouTube. Just go to Smelling Coffee TV on YouTube, and you can see uh, what we've been talking about. We are in the middle of a series on the five love languages. So thank you for being with Absolutely. us again. Absolutely, I'm glad to be here. And uh, as you know how we always start with oh, our, our oh, mugs. And yes. so um, I asked Melanie, she's gonna tell you about her mug in just a minute. Uh, let me tell you about mine has its conversation hearts for Valentine's Day and it says, hug me. And it says, kiss me, true love. Um, just pals, you know, be mine. And it's got all these different ways that people give and receive love. And that's, that's what we're talking about in this uh, series of episodes is the five love languages or the languages of love. Dr. Gary Chapman wrote a book about these. And this is his latest book, the more updated version. Yeah. And you can go to, uh, and let me make sure I have this correct. Um, that's it. The five love languages. Five, the, le the number five lovelanguages.com and you can take a test and see what your love language is. And it's is. free. You can do it for free and it gives yes. the results right there. Yes. Yeah. And kind of gives you mm -hmm. some really some good foundation of what we're yeah, what we're talking about. So last week we introduced the five love languages. So Melanie, why don't you take us through the five that okay. we introduced last uh, week? We talked about we have a symbol for each one. One is gifts. There's words. Here's some words of affirmation. There's time, quality time. This stands, the gloves are for physical touch, any kind of encouragement through that. And then the apron here is for service. And so last week we talked about that typically you find that there's one thing that shows great love to you. And usually you show love in that same way. The way mm -hmm. you like to be loved, you love, mm -hmm. if you will. But it's so, not always the way the person next to yeah. you, the person in your life, generally yes. two people, um, that are that spend a lot of time together don't have the same love languages. Right. We even said it's almost like speaking two languages. If my predominant language is English and yours was Spanish and I was always speaking English to you, <laughs> she wouldn't understand. That's right. And so to communicate, we have to learn to show love in the way that shows those people around us. We're close to our kids, our our parents, our spouses, our mm -hmm. coworkers. We show love in one of these five ways so that they will feel that love. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna think specifically about a couple of these today. Mm -hmm. And right. one of these is gifts. And I'm gonna start <clears throat> just to show you. Now this is not my primary uh, love language, but I like all five. So yeah, we <laughs> you all know. like all five. I think we <laughs> all like to be loved. Some just speak more to us, but this is actually a homemade. I have a friend I was in class with. I've been in graduate school and she made me this. It's homemade pottery. She's a potter and she brought it to me one day. She knew I like to drink coffee. And because I knew there was such thought with it, it makes you feel loved when someone, ma I mean, took the time to make mm -hmm. it for me and it's gave beautiful. it to me. But what my, my primary love language is words, and I remember more what she said to me than, than the gift, but uh -huh. I sure appreciate her gift. Uh -huh. And that's what we're gonna think about. Some folks absolutely feel more love than any other way by gifts, a thoughtful token. It is something tangible. Mm -hmm. Now you can give the gift of time, but typically a gift is something tangible. Mm -hmm. And so um, one of the things that I, we said last week is, if you like gifts, Jennifer, you like any gift. If I were to, I have some lipstick here, and it's my lipstick that's used, but if I gave it to Jennifer and her love language was gifts, she would think it was the greatest thing in the world. Greatly, yeah. Or this pen, it doesn't matter. That's right. Because the idea is that you <coughs> actually think up and plan and give to someone something. That, that's the act of love. And, and so, it doesn't have to be anything extravagant no, or expensive. Not at all. In fact, it was interesting. I looked at some of the things that, that Dr. Chapman recommended. Sometimes it's as simple as getting someone some fresh flowers. I, I heard of a man, he's a friend of our families, and every morning he goes out during the season where there's fresh flowers and he will cut fresh flowers for his wife and bring them in and put them in a vase. And that's she so loves that. Her, her love language is gifts. And her name is Becky, and Becky said, when she tells the story, she tears up because that's how much it means to her. And so, if this is your language... And he might could never have said, oh, Becky, you're so beautiful, yeah. or he might never help her take yeah. out the garbage. He yeah. might never do any of those other things. Yeah. But because he speaks her language of love, she feels love. Right, and he had figured that out. <coughs> I don't know if when they were first married, if he did that, but once he figured that out, mm -hmm. uh, I read another story in the book about a couple, when, when, before they were married, the man had brought gifts and he'd bring her a milkshake or a Starbucks or something nice for his girl, then uh, fiance. Mm -hmm. But once they got married, he hadn't given her anything. 
and she was ready to ha get a divorce. And when they went to see Dr. Chapman, he said, I think your gift is, your love language is gifts. And so as he began to give her gifts, it changed everything. Wow. And he, this husband said, I just didn't re realize. Uh -huh. So it wasn't that he wasn't being kind. Uh -huh. <laughs> he just wasn't speaking her language. So. Wow. Here's a couple of others. And one of the things he said is that gifts are like a sign. They're tangible, Jennifer. So whatever you're doing for someone, it's a sign of how much I mm -hmm. love you. And um, it's not about cost. Mm -hmm. and, and it's really not even about what it is. It's the thought that counts. You know, mm -hmm. they say that a lot. So there's something that's intangible that's spoken through a tangible gift. So let me give you a, a few ideas that were suggested. One, one man did a gift. He, every day of a week, he gave a gift to his wife. And it was something small, but every day he did a week oh, wow. of gifts. Uh, another man that I heard about, and I guess it's a lot of women have the gift <laughs> of gifts, or the love language of gifts, um, he actually would do something for her once a week for a whole year. So it was 52 oh. gifts a year. Now it might be a candy bar, uh -huh. it might be some nail polish, but he gave her something every... Oh, what a yeah. wonderful... Isn't that good? That's such a smart yeah. way to show love. Um, it can even be a gift from nature. Like we said, flowers. Mm -hmm. Um, it could be a, uh, like a book. I thought this was interesting. You give them a book and then you say, I'll, I'll read this with you one chapter at a time and we'll talk about it. And just wow. the thought that they would want to read the book with you. And that's that, that, a gift of a of That's gifts. more than one. That's, that's more than a one. Of time <laughs> and a gift of words, mm -hmm. isn't it? That's, Absolutely. That's good. You know, there was another one that was interesting. They said planting a tree in someone's honor, naming a star in someone's honor, giving to a oh, charity wow. uh -huh. in someone's mm -hmm. name. Those all count. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it doesn't have to be something expensive. And uh, I, when you have a kid that's this way, a child, I think if it's your children or your grandchildren, the same thing. If you notice that they respond, and you can find out if this is a big deal to these people, because if you give them something and they go crazy, no matter what it is, mm -hmm. they probably mm -hmm. have the love language of gifts. And mm -hmm. so that kind of gives you an idea there mm -hmm. on that. And I know that one of the things he said is that it's not the same as materialism. No. So don't equate somebody that likes to receive gifts as being materialistic. In fact, and we talked about this just briefly in our last episode, usually the people with the gift of, th that, that have the love language of gifts, they're very careful with, with what they have. Yeah. I yeah. have a dear friend named Amy who has, this is her love language, and she's yeah. constantly at, at clearance sales. I mean, she's just yeah. the clearance queen, and she yeah. buys all this awesome stuff, yeah. Yeah. and she's constantly giving it. Yeah. You know, here, I brought this for you, or I saw yeah. this and thought yeah. of you, and it might cost her a yeah. dollar or two. Yeah. But it's but that is how yeah, she shows her love and um, yeah I have a friend that I saw I hadn't seen in a while and she brought me a bag kind of like this one and it was filled with gifts and they were all from a discount store but every gift t she said reminded her of me and so there was a pair Aww. of socks because we used to walk together and there was a notebook because she knew I liked to journal and it was oh, all but it was wow. very thoughtful and I realized her her love language is probably gifts absolutely because she had put so much thought into what she mm -hmm. did. But she didn't spend a lot. She had gotten wow. it at a discount store. So, yeah. You know, I was thinking, Jennifer, on this, as you've talked to people, how do you think this might be a challenge? You know, as we think about these love languages, how might it be a challenge to show, speak this language? One of the first things that comes to my mind is the expense of it. Yeah. You know, and what we sit here and say it doesn't have to be expensive. Mm -hmm. And if you've got the, if that is your love language, then you understand that. Yeah. But if it's not your love language, you probably like, have to understand. You have to, to kind of think out. past. Okay, the value of this is not in the price tag, but in the thought behind yeah. it. Yeah, you know. That's and true. I know one of the ways to, uh, if you've got somebody with the gift of, uh, with the love language of gifts, you can keep. Uh, and this is what I did for my friend Amy because I'm not thoughtful like that. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say, <laughs> well, I'm good. not like that. But I kept a little note, uh, little note in my in my book. Uh, for different friends and family members and when I would hear them say that they really liked something yeah. then I would write that down. That's a good idea. And then when I'm out and I see something that reminds me of them or the, the birthday's coming mm -hmm. up and I want to get something that is meaningful yeah. you know That's I would good. get out my list yeah. and look and That's see a great idea. what you yeah. know what they yeah what they liked because usually people that that whose love languages are gifts they do have a lot of stuff and it's hard to yeah. find things to give them. Well, and I have a great, a great suggestion on this is to enlist a personal shopper that's a friend of theirs. Like if they, if this is a coworker yeah. and you're trying to figure out, talk to one of their children or their spouse, if this is a neighbor or somebody you go to church mm -hmm. with, 
try to find somebody that knows them better than you do and say, what do they like? What's their favorite scent? What kind of candles? Mm -hmm. What kind of food do they like? Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of cheat. That's a good idea. It's a little way to yeah. cheat if you don't know what to do for them. That's a so. very good idea. Absolutely. Yeah. What about for kids? What do you think is a key for this with children? Because this could get expensive. It certainly could. And that's what I was thinking. I was looking through here. <laughs> I be. had a little list of um, some ideas. If, if it was for, if your children, um, hmm. Now I can't find them. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> oh, well, you know, it's okay. But, you know, if your children, I know that when my husband used to travel a lot, and sometimes he would literally in the airport buy them each a package yeah. of gum. Yeah. In that airport yeah. store, you know, as yeah. he would be coming off the plane. Yeah. Um, and that meant so much to him. And every mm -hmm. time he would come home, they would put their heads down <laughs> and close their eyes and put their hands out, you know, yeah. at a certain time. Yeah. You know, I, I made them not do that as soon as he came <laughs> home. But, um, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and we would make a big thing about right. it, even though it was a presenting a package of gum. Right, you and know? you know, it doesn't take much. I was thinking, uh, I had a little grandmother that lived just up the road in Clarksdale, and she would go to the dollar store before we would come, and my kids were in elementary school at the time, and she'd just get them each one thing. So it cost mm -hmm. her $2 in tax. <laughs> they liked that more than a lot of the gifts that we gave them. Oh. But she picked out something. She was a good gift giver, and my little Emily, who liked gifts, loved opening something. Wow. And so mm -hmm. it may be just dollar store. That's yeah. another key. You, you said it, opening something. Opening is good. Because if you have the love language of gifts, somebody just go in here, I bought you the cake. <laughs> no, it's thank you. It's not as special as if you took yeah. the said, same said apron and yeah. even put it in a Walmart bag yeah. and, and foo fooed the top of it up with some tissue paper. You're right. You know, it's the presentation of yeah. the gift that actually yeah. means as much almost as the gift itself. Yeah. yeah. So this is, if this is you or this is someone close to you, this one is really not that hard if you can catch on. Uh, but it does take giving. I was thinking about in Philippians 2, uh, Paul talks about uh, unity through humility. And he says this, and this is a hard verse, but he says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than yourself. Let each of you look out not only for your own interests, but also for the interest of others. And so what we're talking about really is unselfish love. Mm -hmm. It's saying this is not as comfortable as some things for me, but I love this person and I want them to feel mm -hmm. loved and mm -hmm. know that they're loved and mm -hmm. I want them to have a full tank so the world doesn't take them away. You know, mm -hmm. this is for the people that, that you care about the most. Mm -hmm. And so there is a secret in this. If mm -hmm. you can, we gotta be unselfish though. I do think we it do. takes. We do, we yeah. do. It is costly. That's one of the things, every one of these gifts cost something, mm -hmm. not necessarily money, but it's whatever it is, because it's not our, yeah. na our nature to give yeah. it, it's gonna cost us. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and that, is, that is what unselfish love yeah. is. And that's but what, how, how well worth it, if you've had the experience where you give someone a gift, or you do something loving for them to watch the satisfaction and that sense of joy that they mm -hmm. have, it's worth mm -hmm. it when mm -hmm. you see that, mm -hmm. so. All right, so that, that was gifts. Another one we're gonna talk about today is, is words, words of affirmation. Now, Melanie and I both have, uh, that's our love language. And so I love, I love all of this. Don't you love to <laughs> get love presents all, everything. and all yes. of that? I love all that. <laughs> but if I had to choose one thing that I would shrivel up and die if I did not get from the people that love me, it would be words. Yeah. And so um, I have had to learn how to be okay with not getting a lot of words because mm -hmm. I'm the only wordy one in my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus and me, we're the only ones that use a whole lot of words in, yeah. in the Walker yeah. household. And so I have had to learn to get my words of affirmation mm -hmm. a lot from God's yeah. word yeah. and be okay with that because my family shows me love in many mm -hmm. other ways. But yeah. I, I do, um, if, you're, if your love language is words, then you remember what people say mm -hmm. to you. And, um, and if, when they say the good things, you live on it for yeah. forever. And if yeah. they say hurtful things, it cuts so deep. It yeah. cuts much, much deeper yeah. than it does You're to right. a person whose yeah. language is not words. Yeah, because if, if words <clears throat> matter to you, that he calls it words of affirmation, that means any word then that's not affirmation can impact you too. Mm -hmm. And those words like replay, if this is you, it's hard to get the words out of your brain. It's mm -hmm. almost like a tape that plays over and mm -hmm. over. Yeah. And if you've got this, get, if this is your primary love language, then you can use your words yeah. to be so powerful in other people's lives mm -hmm. or to be the sharpest daggers <laughs> to cut down. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. 
And so, yeah. um, you know, there's so much the scriptures say about our words. Uh, Proverbs 21, 23 says, whoever keeps his mouth and his tongue <laughs> keeps himself <laughs> out of trouble. Yeah. When, when love, your love language is words, you are one of those people that enjoy talking you and have interacting. A lot of words. You have a lot of words. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and there, therein tends to you can come upon some trouble <laughs> talking too much <laughs> but you know a person yeah. whose love language is words if um, they appreciate the little handwritten note mm -hmm. they appreciate just the text that says hey I'm thinking mm -hmm. about you today or I'm praying for you today um, the and and they will tend to give it so if you've got somebody in your life that is leaving you little notes around and like it's not my family's love language but mm -hmm. I never feel like I can leave the house for an yeah. overnight trip without yeah. leaving a big note on the refrigerator <laughs> yeah. or on the chalkboard yeah. saying that yeah. I love them or tucking it on you know putting it yeah. on their pillows at night yeah before I left to come <clears throat> and, and be on the program I left all my, I sent all my kids a text and my husband and told him I was loved him I was praying for him I was gonna miss him and so I use my words too yeah I think and, it comes very naturally they might just go yeah thanks oh good <laughs> <laughs> there she goes again yeah <laughs> I think it's hard for teenagers especially when they have moms that have the gift of words I think mm -hmm. all of our teens would much yeah. rather have moms with the love language of gifts yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of service you know, and gift giving but you know <laughs> I, I'm thinking about my, my children are 19 and 21 I have a son that's 21 and a daughter that's 19 Last night, my daughter made this incredible, she uh, did artwork for something for school, for college, and it was gorgeous. And the more I talked about it, the more she smiled. And so they uh -huh. do, even if they act like they don't want to hear the words, mo most everyone appreciates a good word, mm -hmm. a word fitly they spoken. That's they right. do. That's right. That's right. Even if that's not the primary love language. Um, you know, Proverbs 18, 21 says that death and life are in the power mm -hmm. of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Yeah. And isn't that true, that's true when that's your that's your love language? Um, Psalm 139 1 warns us to guard our ways so that we might not sin with our tongue. I'll guard my mouth with a muzzle so <laughs> so as long as the wicked are not in my presence. And you know, there are some ways that we can give words and mm -hmm. give the gift of words. We can do it by um, we can use the power of the tongue for good by verbal compliments, mm -hmm. but we want them to mean something. Yeah. Yeah, you know. just, a, just a word spoken is not necessarily words of affirmation. That's right. A thoughtful word goes a long mm -hmm. way. I, I'll give you a great example of this. I've, I've been in graduate school, and so I have many male professors. Most of my professors are men, and they don't give out a lot of compliments. But when they do, and it is truly from their heart that mm -hmm. one told me this and I, and I wrote it down he he sent me a note and he told my husband and then he found me and told me the same thing he said your paper was exemplary I'm not going to ever forget that it wasn't just right. good <laughs> it was exemplary and you yeah, know those, yeah. those things stick with you I had another professor not long ago I read another paper and he said I said was it okay was it good he said it wasn't just good it was great Wow. That's an affirming word. That yes. sticks with you because they have thought about the power of what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. That's good. And encouraging words, you know, uh, like the word okay. People with the gift of words don't like the word okay. <laughs> good. It's good. That's not, yeah, that's not that an affirming not, word. That, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we like to hear beautiful, amazing, awesome, but not or good. Or terrible or whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah, but not okay. But not just okay. <laughs> you know? um, so encouraging words are those words that give courage, that inspire. Mm -hmm. And so if if you've got someone in your life that is um, whose love language is words, then you want to speak things to them that inspire them. Um, let me see. There's a um, words of forgiveness is another one, a mm -hmm. huge one. Mm -hmm. When you have, when you're a words person, um, you know you feel and you you feel those words very very deeply. Mm -hmm. And so when people forgive you and release you, you also receive that forgiveness that's very good. deeply. That's a good thought. And yeah. so our words are used more than just to build up and encourage, but to heal. Yeah. You know, there is there is life and death in the in the power of Absolutely. the tongue, but that is one of the healing. The yeah. life in the tongue is yeah. the words of forgiveness and words of kindness and encourage, mm -hmm. you know, when we said encouragement, but kindness as in, I see what you're going through right now. Mm -hmm. And I just want you to know mm -hmm. that I love you and I'm praying yeah. for you. Yeah. You know, that's just yeah. a kindness that, that did not cost me anything. Yeah. It did not cost me yeah. because words come easy no. for me. But you can but use But a quiet them. person, yes. it would cost them yeah, to say it that. Would. But, but, but how powerful those yeah. words are. You know, and, and along that line, it's just as a, as a great example, and I guess you have Walmart here. Yes, we have yes. Walmart. <laughs> well, I've been in Walmart and Target in the last month, 
and had a checkout person both times that was hurting. And it was amazing. All I did was look them in the eye and say, how are you? And one began to tell me one was, is expecting a baby and the baby's been in distress and she was concerned and I was able just to listen and then to say, I will pray for you. And that, and, and that meant a lot to her. Yeah. And then I, there was a lady yesterday at Target and her, her daughter's been in the hospital, but she had to come to work at Target as a checker. And she was in tears as we talked to her. Oh. And I was able just to encourage her. And it's amazing what a well-timed mm -hmm. word w with sincerity mm -hmm. will mean to someone Mm -hmm. So if this is your gift, you are a blessing to people mm -hmm. around you if you'll let God use the That's words. Right. Absolutely. And you have to get outside of yourself and worrying mm -hmm. about what they're going to think about you yeah. when you step across that threshold yeah. and say that to the checker Absolutely. at Walmart or Target. But how funny that we're talking about gifts and words because my friend Amy always carried with her $5 gift cards to Starbucks <laughs> and yeah. you know, McDonald's yeah. and just several places. Yeah. And she would give those to the checkout people That's a great who idea. were having bad days. Yeah, so some of you maybe that, That's that would right. be what you would she do. Would Absolutely. Do, you know, she would open up her wallet mm -hmm. when she's getting her money out and say, here, go have a coffee on me or go yeah. have a Coke on me. Yeah. And how thoughtful yeah. that is. Absolutely. She was speaking in her language. Yeah. Uh, in a way that would bless that person and you were speaking in your language in a way that would bless that, that person. That's good. That's a good thought. And Absolutely. so if you and Amy came through that line at the same <laughs> They'd be the real same happy day, to see us that day. <laughs> they sure would be. They yeah. sure would be. You know, it's not necessarily um, the words you say, but it's how how mm -hmm. they're said mm -hmm. that the, the word person hears. Wow. Yeah, because when they see the look in your eye and they see you're sincere and that you really care and that you're listening to what they're really saying, then it does make a difference, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I encourage you, absolutely, if that's your gift, you can use the internet, you can use Facebook, you can use mm -hmm. handwritten notes through the mail. I mean, mm -hmm. there are so many ways to use words for mm -hmm. good. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, I want to share one thing, and then we've got to wrap this one up. If you are married and your spouse's love language is words, or even if it's not, Nancy Lee DeMoss on her program um, offers this. Uh, she has a... a radio ministry and a wonderful reviveourhearts.com. I'd love, I just consider her uh, one of my disciplers <laughs> that I don't personally yeah. know because I listen to her on a consistent basis. But she has a 30 day love challenge for you to do with your spouse. Your spouse doesn't even need to know you're doing it. But for 30 days, you commit to not saying one negative thing to or about wow. your spouse. Wow. <laughs> and then instead of not saying anything negative, for those same 30 days, say one thing positive to mm. and about your spouse. Wow. And yeah, so everybody needs, everybody, even if that's not Yeah, you could do that gift, with, not even with your husband with your, or wife. Right, yeah, that right. could be with anybody that you right, have that a you're challenging close, relationship that's, with. That's yeah. exactly right. A coworker that's <laughs> yeah. just really under your skin. Yeah. Try the 30 yeah, day love challenge. that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> or better yet, learn that coworker's yeah. love language. Yeah. Go to fivelovelanguages.com, take mm -hmm. a yeah. test about that coworker, see what their love language yeah. is, and then love them in that yeah, way yeah, it, it really good. is amazing we're going to wrap this segment up on gifts and um, words uh, but we're going to be back again next week on some more uh, talking more about the other love languages and the ways that we can give and receive love and the lord jesus gives us this mm -hmm. speaks our language in in both of these ways and everything that he gives us every good and perfect gift is from the lord james tells us and in the scriptures and and his words are power and life to us and breath and mm -hmm. um and so he speaks these love languages to us and that's one of the things we want to um, ask him this week that we he would open our eyes to see how much he loves us in the language that we receive and understand Absolutely. and then to empower us to be able to love those mm -hmm. around us in that same way let me pray with us lord jesus i thank you for your love for us i thank you for these just for um, knowing and understanding the different ways that humans receive and give love, Lord. And I thank you for some divine reason in your wisdom. You put people around us that don't speak the same love language we do. And it cost us something to love them in their own language. And I just ask that you would show us that. Open our eyes to how we can do that. How you love us in the languages that we hear and that we understand and as we fill up on your love, then we are more capable and able to pour out your love onto those around our lives. So Lord, I pray that you would help each of us to take this 30 day love challenge with somebody in our lives to, to not tear down with our words, but to use our words to build up and to look around us and see what it is we have that we could give to the other person that would be a blessing to them, whether it's words or objects or time or 
uh, touch or, or the other love languages, Lord, I just pray that you would continue to open our eyes to how we can share your love with others. Thank you for your love that knows no limits. Thank you so much that no matter how um, far away from you that we, we tend to go sometimes, you still love us the same. We love you, Lord, and we just thank you for that. In your name, amen. amen. I hope you'll join us again next week as we continue to talk about the love languages. Melanie has a wonderful, encouraging blog where she uses her gift of words of affirmation. <laughs> very, very encouraging. And so you can visit uh, her blog at melanieredblogspot.com. And I'd love for you to visit with me at smellingcoffee.com. And you can check out what's going on in our church at underthesteeple.com. I hope you'll join us again next week. And until then, may the Lord just pour over you his love in the way that you receive it best. And may you know the aroma of the knowledge of Jesus Christ in every single place. God bless you.